This is safe, right? Yeah, totally safe. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, I did not think this one through. Watch where you're going in slow-mo, dip <laughs> The second that Rick Riker enters No Way Home is the moment that that film is going to become absolute pure cinema. But regardless, welcome back True Believers and all you spectacular Spidey fans to another very exciting video pertaining to our friendly neighborhood wall crawler before the massive cinematic moment of Spider-Man No Way Home actually releases apparently tomorrow in theaters considering that today at the time of this recording is december 15th tomorrow is the 16th which the movie will release later in the evening on thursday in the united states it's already out in the uk but for here in america it comes out tomorrow night but for me i'm actually going to be watching the film on saturday with my dad and of course we will be reviewing the movie after we see it together both spoilers and non-spoilers so you'll get both the double package from both of us by the time that the film is out by this weekend and hopefully you will enjoy our review just talking about the film together but basically i want to kind of just elaborate more about what exactly is happening right now in terms of spider-man in media and how crazy it is to be a fan of this character within the 21st century mainly in just the year of 2021 spider-man is having an amazing time in all forms of media obviously comics is a big one from marvel but everything else seeing this particular character thrive amongst every other superhero out there both from marvel and dc is genuinely a dream come true for someone of course like me and i'm sure all of you who grew up as major major spider-man fans and the fact that he is not only thriving of course in this upcoming movie which is bound to make a billion dollars and i'm very happy that a lot of people are actually looking forward to the film and tom holland himself seems genuinely passionate about the role of peter parker as a whole but basically for everything else that we discuss on my channel in particular and how spider-man is completely just basking in glory in every other sense of the word mainly of course in video games animated films upcoming movie spinoffs with other characters pertaining to Spider-Man, and just any other types of modern media that you can find under the sun. So basically in this video, I did want to elaborate more about all the highs and potential lows that Spider-Man has been appearing in within current pieces of media and entertainment, but also exactly where we can expect Spider-Man to appear within the next coming years, which is going to be a very, very exciting couple of years for Spider-Man as a character. And firstly, let's just get the black sheep out of the way right here and right now is of course spider-man appearing within the not too well received marvel video game that of course being marvel's avengers which recently yeah spider-man was added as a free additional dlc character to the roster of the game exclusively on playstation 4 and playstation 5 where essentially he did not have an in-game story of the scale of Kate Bishop, Clint Barton, or Black Panther, but rather that he did have a small hero event, which slightly went over his brief interactions with the team, but basically you just had to keep doing the same type of Avengers formulaic gameplay structure that we do know for the game, of beating up robots, grinding for gear, and doing the same thing over and over and over again. And if you personally want to learn more about my overall opinions for Spider-Man's inclusion, for Marvel's Avengers, and whether or not waiting for him was well worth it. I did do a review about the topic, so definitely make sure to check that video out if you haven't already. But basically, I do find it intriguing nonetheless, where we do actually see Spider-Man appear, which is technically considered to be in a AAA Marvel video game like Marvel's Avengers, and teaming up with other characters like the Avengers in a video game of that scale is pretty darn exciting nonetheless. And considering that you also have the ability to team up with three of your other friends who can also play as Spider-Man and pretty much just rock the Spider-Verse in that game, is definitely going to have its fan appeal in one way or another. But what's even funnier and crazier, instead of Spider-Man actually appearing as an additional playable character within Marvel's Avengers, is the fact that Epic Games finally added him within Fortnite. And I know how crazy this might sound, but believe me when I say that I have personally never played Fortnite in my entire life, but the fact that the overall web-swinging mechanics that Spider-Man has within that game are seemingly and somehow better than Marvel's Avengers and how Spider-Man operates in that game, 
game is just outright absurd. Fortnite already has a huge legacy as it currently stands by adding in several other comic book characters within the game, even from the DC and Marvel Universe like Iron Man, Venom, Batman, and Wonder Woman, but the fact that Spider-Man, who is a hugely popular character, has finally been included within the game might end up giving the game a totally brand new vibe, which will obviously draw in players who are huge fans of the character, and just giving it a totally new breath of fresh air is just something that is very exciting to see amongst both the Fortnite and Spider-Man community. But what's even more exciting, especially for those of you who are familiar with my channel and the main subject that we talk about on here, is the fact that Insomniac Games continue to be the amazing developers that they are, and actually included both of the Spider-Man No Way Home movie suits of the integrated suit, which is known as the hybrid suit in-game, as well as the black and gold suit, and added them into Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered for absolutely free. However, like I already discussed in a previous video, is that the only downside about this free update is that Insomniac only included the two No Way Home suits into Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered, which is exclusively on PlayStation 5, instead of also adding them into the base Marvel's Spider-Man experience on PlayStation 4. But if you can take that negative aspect about the suit's inclusions and put it aside, the fact that Insomniac is continuously adding updates to a game, at least the base version, which is over three years old at this point, and still giving free content for fans to thoroughly enjoy, it just allows me to respect Insomniac Games even more as a developer to showcase how much they truly care about their fans base and how much the character of Spider-Man means to them on a personal level. Not to mention that both of our favorite Spider-Boys of Peter Parker and Miles Morales are also going to be receiving their own sequel from Insomniac's universe of Marvel Spider-Man 2, where of course they are going to be returning within their spider suits, going up against Venom, Kraven the Hunter, and likely a plethora of other villains that are going to be incorporated within the Insomniac Games Marvel Universe. And for me personally, like you clearly know already, is that that game is easily the most anticipated Spider-Man project. I am looking forward to the most, considering how this is going to be a darker story in comparison to the previous Insomniac Spider-Man games that we have seen prior, and the fact that we're dealing with hugely, hugely beloved characters in my eyes like Venom and Kraven the Hunter, and seeing how Insomniac are going to put their own twist on those overall characters is just going to provide a hugely, insanely detailed narrative that is going to showcase Peter, Miles, Venom, Kraven, and whoever else is going to appear in that game, in ways that we have never seen before, especially in an interactive space like a video game. So I cannot wait for that title, but the fact that it is going to release in 2023 only on PS5 is definitely going to make the wait a bit harder for a lot of people. And obviously for those of you out there who do not currently own a PlayStation 5, it is definitely going to be a challenge for you to acquire one before then, but I definitely think that you will be able to get one. I have total faith in you guys and just hang out for all the amazing content that I'm going to be talking about for that game once we end up receiving more news for it. But moving on back to the movie side of things, that is definitely where we get to a lot more intriguing projects that are occurring within Sony Pictures' development pipeline pertaining to both live action and animated alike, which of course I am referring to the Morbius villain movie as well as the Kraven the Hunter villain movie starring Aaron Taylor Johnson and of course Morbius is starring Jared Leto and likely there is going to be a third Venom movie to wrap up that overall trilogy of villain films. And while we haven't really seen anything as of yet so far coming from the Kraven the Hunter film as well as the inevitable Venom 3 movie, is that Morbius out of everything actually looks kind of good. I mean, I am a relatively big fan of Spider-Man villains, of course, but mainly for a character like Morbius getting his own film, it's something that I wasn't really too fond of at first, considering that I don't think a character like Morbius really could carry his own standalone narrative in a movie. But after seeing the trailers and listening to what Jared Leto had to say about the role, it certainly got me more interested to see exactly what the narrative could be for the film and what exactly Sony could possibly do with the character if they decide to blend him in with the MCU. Of course, also adding on to the future of Tom Holland as Spider-Man in live action because it was already confirmed by Amy Pascal and I think Kevin Feige, is that they are going to be making more Spider-Man movies. Of course, it's Spider-Man. He's going to get more films, but basically it sounds like they're going to be continuing the Spider-Man universe with Tom Holland in the MCU, but it's going to be in college. So a trilogy of Spider-Man movies again after No Way Home, but focusing on a older, hopefully more mature Peter Parker 
in the MCU timeline, which in my opinion, I think could be very, very cool if handled properly. That definitely gives me Spider-Man the new animated series vibes of that show where Peter was in college. And if they do go that route of carrying a mature tone with allowing Peter to grow, and if all ends up going well with the current MCU trilogy that we have, and the future college trilogy, which is coming down the line, it could easily provide a very encapsulating series of Spider-Man films alongside of tying them all together with these villain spin-offs of Morbius, Kraven the Hunter, Venom 3, and all other types of characters that Sony could use in their expansive Spider-Man movie-verse. I think that's a very unique idea. It hasn't been done before on this grand of a scale, so it is very ambitious in that regard. Still, I just hope that the narratives that they portray and tell in each of those films does carry a story that does the characters of Spider-Man, Morbius, Venom, and whoever else justice. But on the flip side, if you are someone who is actually a fan of seeing Spider-Man as a less experienced superhero and not really being the full-fledged iconic character that we know from the comics, well, we are going to get more of a prequel story of sorts for Tom Holland's Spider-Man in the form of an animated show of Spider-Man freshman year. Now, luckily, this is not going to be anything like the Marvel Spider-Man Disney XD show, which is my least favorite iteration of Spider-Man in animated form, but rather, it is an animated series of Tom Holland's Spider-Man early in his career. It is obviously Spider-Man in his freshman year of high school and seeing, I believe, maybe the origins of the MCU's Peter Parker, but again, in an animated format. I'm very curious to see exactly what the animation style could be, but I obviously love what they're doing with the other animated movie, not show, but animated film of Across the Spider-Verse, both part one and two, part one coming in October of 2022. And while both projects are being helmed by completely different production teams and art styles, that art style for Across the Spider-Verse and the multitude of art styles we're going to see in that film is going to be absolutely mind-blowing, but I am still curious to see exactly what freshman year could bring to the table in terms of just providing a new type of visual aesthetic to Spider-Man in an animated format. If anything, I definitely think it's going to be better than the Disney XD show, but I am still holding out hopes someday down the line for season two of Spider-Man, the new animated series. One way or another, I hope we get that, but only time will tell. But with all that said, everybody, that is the video that I have for you today. And please let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think of all these crazy Spider-Man projects that are coming from both Marvel and Sony, and of course from Insomniac Games and Marvel Games, from the movies, comics, TV shows, video games, everything? It is definitely a crazy, crazy time to be a Spider-Man fan, and the fact that this character is getting so much love and care being portrayed into him in different types of media across modern culture that we do have in so much depth that you wouldn't necessarily expect from an animated film or a video game or a massive movie of this scale like we're seeing in No Way Home. The fact that there's so many different iterations of the character being handled in so many different ways shows that obviously, again, Spider-Man is a timeless hero that is appealing to everyone. No matter who you are, what you are, what you look like, what you may feel like inside, Spider-Man is our hero, and the fact that every single one of us can connect to him on a personal level one way or another, no matter who he is, Peter, Miles, Gwen, uh, you know, Penny Parker, Spider-Ham, even anyone, really, the fact that he's getting that much attention in so many different ways is a dream come true for a Spider-Man fan like myself, and seeing so many people bond over the character in so many different ways is just the cherry on top of this incredible Sunday. But, thank you all so much for watching, everybody. Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. Which particular Spider-Man project are you looking forward to the most? Which one has been your least favorite so far? And are you excited, obviously, for No Way Home coming out in just a couple days at this point in America? Or, today, it's out now in the UK, so enjoy. Let me know all your thoughts. No spoilers, though. And definitely look out for my thoughts for the film coming relatively soon. Probably this weekend. But until next time, True Believers, thank you all so much for watching. Stay spectacular, Spidey fans. And peace out.